Dolores Day, the innocence of humanism, internationalism, and the welfare state turns around to face you. She has an airship airbag in her hand. She seems to be in a hurry. Okay, don't say you need to talk right away. Melt the ice first. This way you're already talking. But you don't even want to talk to her. She would only be cold and mean. Let her go. Let her go? This is the Holy Queen of the territories of Muindi and Insulinda. Think of the historic knowledge we could glean. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to win her back. Hey. I mean, hey to you too. I'm doing really good, actually. Both professionally and romantically. I've come to a fulfilling and peaceful period in my life. Well, how are you doing, Harry? Well, don't say that. I know this positive thing sounds stupid to you, Harry, but it works. We all have an obligation to be happy. You too. And you will be. Now. This is everything I always warned you about. I'm sorry. I was heading to the aerodrome. I just don't have time to... She means she doesn't have time to tend to your emotions. <sighs> What are you doing? Stop saying things like that. I'm going to Morova. To live there, in Grad. It's one million kilometers away, Harry. Might as well be another lifetime. Just my scepter, my globe crucigere, a spare silk gown, a toothbrush, travel documents, the crown of immortality. Oh, this. This is just a wreath. The crown of immortality is made of rarefied light, manna and raw palladium. It was passed on to me by the rulers of late antiquity. She looks at the suitcase, not knowing what more to say. Then, over her shoulder, silence. Her nuptial gown flows in the wind, wraps around her holy body. Anyway... No, Harry. It's just regular skin. I'm not- She does not answer. There's that expression again. Silence. A distant wind blows. You can't think of anything pretty to say. No, Harry. No. I don't want a massive, epic showdown. I want to go to the aerodrome. I have tickets for the 1020 flight to Morova. Really, we don't have anything to talk about anymore. Every combination of words has been played out. The atoms don't form us anymore. Us, our love, our unborn daughters, it's all gone. I have to go to the aerodrome. I have to leave Ravishol and you. And you have to be alone, in hell, forever. That's just the way it is. With your feet trembling from the steps you took, tepid and fearful, you stand against her, her body close to you radiating warmth. With your eyes closed, you move your lips on her mouth. She is not kissing you back. This was not about failure or success. This was always going to be horror. I should not have suggested it, and you should not have listened to me. Her chest rising like a pillow, Warm exhalations against the side of your mouth, her tender soul moving through her lungs, hidden, distant, kept safe from you. Feels like soft fuzz, a bird covered in down feathers, brushing against your broken capillaries. The delicate wreath on her forehead pressing into your temple, 
The silver is cold from the spring evening air. Her hand does not return the grip. Her body is rigid. A current of unease courses through it. Nothing, just pillows against you. Unresponsive, but for the taste of apricots. The moment is ending. She is going to move her face away from yours, trying hard not to look at you. When she withdrew and you held on to her hand, she tried not to look at your face and see the expression there. Brother, you should put me in front of a firing squad. I have no words for how I failed you. No, Harry. Not yet. There is one more thing you have to see. I'm pregnant. Of course not. I terminated yours. Don't you remember? You poor fuck. Poverty-stricken fuck. Now, go ahead. Ask me more questions. Let's talk about something else. No, this has to end. Do the last one. More questions. Ask more. I don't know what you mean. Dolores Day. Wasn't I Dolores Day just a second ago? Now I'm the X thing? You're confusing me. Look, I have to be at the Lausanne Aerodrome at 10.20 p.m. I still have a light rail to catch. I haven't even bought the tickets yet. We all told you. Everyone warned you. Everyone. Literally all of you. Great. It's the abyss of the void. Soon it will be the gloaming, then it will be the world ending. My friends are waiting for me on the platform, Harry. It's impolite to... What? She does not look back. Instead, eyes her fingernails. They're bitten, frayed. The evening wind blows in. The gown wraps around her like a white flag. A thousand times you beat an animal. A thousand times you've raised that fabric. What is underneath has always calmed you, centered you. The morning? I don't understand. Oh my god, Harry, stop. I don't want to hear anything about the morning. Morning someone who's still alive. Any of that. I can't do that anymore. I'm not 80 years old, I'm 32. People my age are not supposed to mourn. Oh, Harry, you shouldn't have done that. Call me like that. You ruined it. There was still a chance. You should have waited longer. She would have called you instead. Oh, Harry, do you really think so? We haven't talked in years. I don't want to call you. I don't want to hear from you. I think of you less and less every year. Weeks go by without me remembering you. Months already. Soon it will be years. Every season that passes, the light gets less clear. I sit there in Morova, in the holy gratitude of my bliss. I put my hand on my belly and smile. The air gets cold around you. She looks down on her stomach, then up at you. Her eyes are full of tremendous distance and mystery. Black-eyed dogs wander the alleys. Apple trees hang their bony limbs low over the patchwork of roofs, red and black. Revachol West, the evening sun. She's left and bloomed, far away from us, our vast soul. It's Dora. That's what the voice said on the phone. Dubois, yes, Dora Dubois. Oh no, 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 no. We're not doing that again. Yes, Harry. 
I am. Things have gotten much better for me, now that I am the ruler of the known world. It's not, but... I don't know why I said but. There is no but. That's it, yes. We've talked about it a million times. You will get over it, just like I did. People do. Things will get good for you again. See? It just takes some time. For you, I think it'll take something like 20 years, maybe. It was hard for me, too. I used to think I couldn't live without you. But I can. She keeps her shoulders squared and her back straight. But it's clear you're still making her sad. It's not. It's just not possible. It's like eating rocks. You just can't do it. Yes. It only took me one year, maybe two. Phew. Yes. But that time is gone now. So very gone. There is a silence. She looks at you, then over her shoulder, then corrects the wreath on the dome of her forehead. As you talk, it feels like chewing on gravel, granite, steel bars. It's okay. No, Harry. We can't. We already tried again, and it didn't work. Is that how it is now? We should just try all good things twice, and then give up. By that logic, not you too. Of course. You're a visionary entrepreneur, and I'm a social democrat. Because I don't want to keep hurting you. I don't know. Please. Harry, we can't be together because you're insane. She avoids turning them to you. They're turning moist now. Her eyes. She slowly sh You know what I mean. No, you don't. You've worked there for so long, you can't even talk like a normal person anymore. It's always lists with you. Questions. This is another one, isn't it? We're in a tree right now. It's not just the lists, or trees, or whatever. You get sad, Harry. Too sad. People can't get that sad. It's impossible to watch. Other people get sad too, but not like you. You stay down for years, and then you start beating things. You get violent. In conclusion, you're ill. You're an old, insane man. And you have to be in hell until the end of your life. And I have to go to Morova. We both said a lot of things. We were very young. As Queen Regnant, I write a lot of letters. Okay, Harry. Okay. It was morning and you slept. The room smelled of cigarettes and ruins. There was hoarfrost on the ground when I left. It was autumn, the first one we had together. But you have to understand, it was a million years ago. No, it was a hundred million years ago. I was someone else then, filled to the brim with love for you, hanging on your every word. Oh, Harry, you were the coolest. But I am no longer that person. This has taken her place. It will devour you. Harry, I will eat your mind. The coolest. 
with your leather jacket and your boot-cut pants, smoking in the bus stop. I wanted you to be the rest of my life that day. And you were. Some of it, at least. You were my first. My first kiss. My first time to have sex. The first and worst time I fell in love. I will always have that with me. It's a fact. But that is all it is. It's like a ticket stub, Harry. It doesn't do anything anymore. Yes, let's talk about that too. Let's bring it up, the zoo. In Le Jardin, the day we went east of the river, to the aquarium first, I was sad about my mother. I don't even know why. The shimmer of the fish tank on my face, the octopuses. It was just a day then, but to think, were we there now, you could touch my hair, kiss me, talk to me about anything, go virtually anywhere in the world. Not like now. Now our interactions are limited to pain and regret. No, you scared it out of me. With your crying, your hysteric, the awful time we wound up having, and the cheap rental flats you could afford. Can't you see? I can never think you're cool again. I can only think that way about new people. It's here. We are on Voyager Road. At the end of it, 300 meters from the stop. We used to come here to rent videos. There, you could not pay the electrical bill. It became a lightless tomb. The years you spent training for the militia, my parents' money, it was not good. Is there really anything left? If not, we can always repeat one of the things we have already talked about. Talk about it again. If you do not feel like doing that, then you should let me go to the aerodrome. I have to, Harry. Really, I've already missed the 8.30. I'm gonna go now. I was wrong. You don't have power over her anymore. You shouldn't have said that. I am wrong about everything. You should go on without me. Light. Life. Culture. It's so much better than here. Everything here reminds me of you. And the horrible times we had. The nights we stayed up fighting for our dying love. I have to wipe it all off me and be clean again. I want to be a good person again. Not this. Not what you made me into. No. That would only be painful and dull. At the aerodrome, life, love, and laughter are waiting for me. At the cafeteria, dust, hell, and tragic comedy. That was someone else. I betrayed her, overwrote her, and I'm happier for it. And I'm really going now. The time is up. I must be on the 1020 flight. I won't see you, but you will see me. Oh, Harry, this is a dream. Can't you see? I'm already in Morova by now. Who knows how long ago this happened? A year? Two? Five years ago? Right here tomorrow night. Once this dream starts happening, it keeps happening. Three times a week, at least. And Harry, it really, really looks like it started happening again. There's the video rental. I'm suffocatingly beautiful and young, and I smell of tutti fruity chewing gum, like I did that time when I asked you for forgiveness. After leaving you the first time, so long ago. Oh yes, this is real darkness. It's not death or war or child molestation. Real darkness has love for a face. The first death is in the heart, Harry. See you tomorrow. <laughs>